Okay, so in this video we're going to apply Octave to actually solve this numerically and we're going to compare that to the exact solution. So in case you don't know how to find the exact solution, I recommend you watch my playlist on differential equations and I have included a link to the video that explains how to do this simple equation uh, using analytical methods. And you will find out that the analytical solution to this problem is given by the following solution. So it is going to look like a decaying exponential function and the initial value of the population n is just going to be this um, initial value here. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this into octave. We are going to use Euler's method to do that. And we're going to choose a bunch of parameters. So for, for this case, we're going to choose the following. We're going to have k equals 0 0.5. Let's make delta t equals to something like 0 0.1. And then let's say that the time is going to extend from 0 to zero to 10 seconds. Alright, so that's basically going to be the whole span of the problem. Now, in Octave, basically what you want to do is you want to do the following. We're going to start off by writing something very simple. So we need to write down the parameters. So let's say delta t is going to be equal to 0 0.1. And now we want to create a vector for our time value. So the way you create a vector in Octave or MATLAB is you write using the following. So the spacing between the points is going to be put in the middle. So you have your delta t here. And then you're going to put a final value. So 10 seconds here. So basically what this means is this is going to create a vector of equal space values between 0 and 10. And the spacing between those points is going to be your delta t, which is 0 0.1. And now the next thing is going to be our k value, which is 0 0.5. And now what we can do is we can, well, obviously we're going to need to write our initial population. So let's choose something like 100. And now let's write the analytical solution or the exact solution. And this is going to be n equals to, let's call it n exact, just to differentiate it from the numerical one. It's going to be equal to n naught times exponential of minus k times t so this is going to create a vector of values for based on the exact solution and now we want to have our numerical solution which is going to be calculated using Euler's method so what we're going to do is we're going to place this finite difference equation we have here inside of a loop so in Octave and MATLAB, you write a loop by saying 4, and the subscript we're using is i, so let's say i goes from 1, so we're going to index our arrays based on this, from 1 to, say, the length of t, which is just essentially how many values does the vector t have. And now what we're going to have is our n. Now the problem here is, let me just close the loop before we continue and here we need to declare the vector outside of our loop so basically we need to create an empty vector so this is going to contain the numerical solution so we say zeros of the same size of t comma one and the reason you need this is because in octave and matlab you usually deal with matrices so you have a number of rows and a number of columns and if you want to create a vector or a column vector then you need to uh, specify that you only have one column here and zeros essentially just put us just puts a zero everywhere where you have basically a value there and now the next thing you're gonna do is the indexing in MATLAB and Octave is essentially from one so when you put a one in your vector that essentially means you're taking the first value there so you wouldn't put a zero you don't index things from zero in Octave and MATLAB so this one will be equal to the initial value of the population. Now we're ready to write it exactly like this. So instead of using that, we're going to use i plus 1. And now we're going to have n i and minus k times delta t times n at point i. And this is essentially going to calculate the values of that numerical solution for all values of t. So for each value of t, we're going to have a value of n. 
And now we need to be a little bit careful in the way that we define this because notice that this subscript here is i plus 1. So what happens when i is equal to the last value of t or is equal to essentially the total length of t? This is going to create a value that goes beyond the length of t, which means that this vector would have one more element compared to t. And if the vectors do not have the same dimensions, then we're going to get an error. So to avoid an error, what we're going to do is, well, let's say we skip the last value and we go all the way to length of t minus 1. That way, when we get to the last value of i here, we're actually addressing the final value of n. And that's how you usually would do it. Okay, so that's all we have here. And now all we want to do is we want to plot both solutions. So let's say we want to plot t and then n exact. And then we're going to plot t again and then the numerical solution. And how about we give it a legend? So let's call the first one exact. And the second one, let's call it Euler. And I think this should be good enough, but let's add some names to the axis. So let's say x label time in seconds. And then let's say y label population size. It looks better when we put things. And for title, let's just give it something like comparison of Euler and exact solutions. Okay, I think we're ready now to run this program. And now what we're going to do is, well, first of all, we need to save this somewhere. So let's give it a name. Let's give it a name. Um, how about just Euler population. And now we should be able to run it. And here we have it. So. What is happening here is, I'm going to see if I can expand this a little bit so you can see it more clearly. And that's beautiful. That's really good. So you can realize that here we have the two solutions. We have the exact solution in blue, and we have the Euler solution in orange. And you can clearly see that they're very close together. You can see how the, the, cur the curvature is very similar. The values are very close to each other. And it looks like this is a really, really good approximation to the exact solution. And essentially, we didn't really need to use, uh, we didn't have the need to use a very small step size. We used 0 0.1 here. Uh, but let's say we used 1 instead. Let's try and see what, what happens when we make the step size a lot larger. Is the accuracy going to be affected by that? Let's see about that. So now I'm running the program, and we should be able to see, well, we, c we can clearly see now that the Euler method is very, very far away from the exact solution. So obviously, the accuracy has been affected by using a larger step size. Similarly, if we make this even smaller, so let's say 0 0.001, then what we will see is now they're almost identical. You can't even tell the difference between the two methods. So this means that the accuracy has improved quite a lot. And if you keep decreasing the step size, then you will see that the accuracy will improve more and more. Now, there is a little slight problem with the older method, which I'm going to show you. And it is that it, its error tends to increase as you increase your length of time. So to calculate the relative error, relative error all you're going to do is you're going to have your exact solution minus your numerical you're going to divide it by the exact take the absolute value and then multiply it by 100 so this is going to give you the relative error between the two solutions in terms of a percentage so let's write that into our program here let's make another vector and in this case let's call it the error so this is going to be the absolute value of n exact minus n and now what we're going to do is well we need to make sure that our absolute value is has the correct number of brackets so we're going to divide this by n exact 
and let's multiply it by 100. So now we're going to create another plot. So let's call this figure 1. And let's call the other one figure 2. And we're going to plot the relative error, t against error. And x label time in seconds. And y label is going to be relative error in percentage. And let's just skip the title and let's see if this gives us the correct solution. So let's see what we get from that. Well, it seems that we're getting some sort of very weird shape here. So I think we maybe we may have done a little bit of a, a problem here. So let's say, oh, okay, so I see what the problem is. So Octave and Matlab have this tendency to do silly things when you divide a vector by another. So it's better to just grab your vector and put these brackets and these columns inside. So this essentially makes sure that you're performing the operation element by element. So we should see, once I get rid of these two figures here, we should see a much better curve. And for some reason it is not showing up. Still waiting for it. Oh, it looks like it crashed. Well, that's not really good for a presentation, so let's just wait for it to give us something. Oh, I believe I may have just included a little bit of a... No, it should be fine. That's not looking correct either, so let's put a dot in there. Let's see. There, there we go. So this is what I was looking for. Sometimes uh, Octave does silly things with the graphs, but this is what you will observe with your Euler method. So the Euler method has this tendency to increase um, in a linear kind of fashion when you move forwards in time. And the reason for this is that you notice that in this case, even though the solution looks, the numerical solutions look, looks very similar to the exact one, it seems that it diverges a little bit, but then it starts to come together. But because the values here are much smaller in proportion to that one, then that means that the relative error the proportion of the error is actually increasing in this linear fashion. So obviously at this point, at the time 10 seconds, what you have is you have an amount of error that is increasing significantly. And you can see it's higher than 1.2%, which is considerable. And if you make your step size even smaller, sorry, instead of small, let's make it larger and see how this compares. So now you can see that when you get to time 10 seconds, your relative error is 12%. So it's not very good, but we can usually improve this by decreasing the step size. So it shouldn't be too bad after a while. So you can see that there's a, there's a magnitude of order of magnitude in which it decreases. So now we have 0.12%. That's pretty reasonable. So all you need to do is keep decreasing your step size and you'll get the correct solution. But in the next video, we're going to continue with examples of implementation of the Euler method, and then we'll see what we can do after that.